Welcome. It's our first panel of the day and we're going to be talking about Hussein Shalayan and the Shalayan Show and what an amazing panel I have with me. It's a very large panel today. <laughs> I have the wonderful Caroline Evans, Colin McDowell, Ian Webb, Rosanna Faulkner and Camilla Morton. How are you all enjoying Paris Fashion Week so far, what you've seen of it and are you excited for the Hussein Show? Who's going to go first? <laughs> I, 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 overnight um, I was thinking about things and I was very happy to see this kind of, we were talking about, touched on it yesterday, this sort of new modesty mm -hmm. um, with things, uh, this fabulous long dresses coming in, but not as kind of, you know, red carpet evening wear, but this kind of cloaked almost in, mm. in a kind of purity. Um, and I'm liking that a lot. Um, so, yeah, and I think there's some very interesting things happening. It's a very interesting time, mm. I think, especially in Paris. Actually, that's a very interesting point, Ian, because I remember one we did earlier, which was Versace, mm. and there the dresses, were, the evening dresses, were slit right up to, to the waist almost, but they yeah. did look wholesome somehow. Mm. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. They, they did not look they wholesome. I was at that show more <laughs> than one time. The garment was so small that it slipped, and you could literally see what it was meant to be covering. It was so funny watching all the straight men who were in the front row, just, they just didn't know where are to there look. Are there straight men in the front row? <laughs> there are, but they were all just oh, like... Oh, they were businessmen, I They looked yeah. so uncomfortable. I'm um, sure they did. Because the, yeah. you probably couldn't see it from the images, but you know they had those lacing? It mm. went round the back as well and kind of across the bow. Oh, and it right. Would, it well, we only got a 2D well, view. Well, yes, well, yeah. what we yeah. saw, it did look, it, no. it looked mm. quite yeah, it looked fresh. Yeah, it looked quite innocent. Yeah. 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 The, 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 the more fabric that is being involved, certainly. Yeah. I think that in a way, it's the extremes of things, though. Even within the Balenciaga yesterday, you had the very short things, mm. and then the longer um, ruffles and the more covered up. Mm. Who's actually who's gone long this season? Giles did, yeah, yeah. with his um, laser Gareth, 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 yeah. Also, there well, is Gareth. I put him on a different plane completely. He's but not part of but even ways. someone like Christopher Kane, he didn't go yes. long, but the kind of the colours he was using and the textures, it was this kind of well, that's true. Also about Christopher, yes. But also, I think looking back to, and especially talking about Hussein today, you know, that kind of 90s into the 2000s, mm. those people that were around then, like the Anne de Meesters, Veronique Branquino, are doing fabulous things. And it's, it, it is that sort of mood, it's that mock gothic mm. um, thing, which I, I just find very mm. intriguing at this time. Yeah. Mm. Um, but it's only in the evenings, isn't it, really? I mean, well, we're still seeing very short skirts from David. There are short skirts as well, but then you have someone like Dries. And again, mm. what, I, what I liked about that was the fact that it, you know, in the 90s you had that whole sheer thing that was going on forever, but everything was on show. Whereas now it's being used as a coverall mm. with things underneath. Um, so that there's actually clothes yeah. underneath and then a sheer kind of cocooning yeah. above. And I, and I know Rick Owens uh, was talking about that, this kind of protective yeah. thing uh, and how do you do something like that within mm. society now. The idea of mood, I'm interested you mentioned that because I think that's something that's always been so important to Hussein's work, this idea of it's not really just about the clothing or the wearer or how it makes you look, it's much more about a feeling and you see that in some of his sort of his presentations and and the way he and yeah the way he sort of frames his clothing within a general setting and do you think that that's something a way in which fashion is at its best when it it kind of moves outside of fashion looks at other issues because he often focuses on topics that are sort of apart from fashion and related to other issues and do you think that's when fashion is at its most interesting that, Caroline? well, yeah, Caroline's our Hussein <laughs> expert no I'm not <laughs> <laughs> you're like no, no. no. Um, I think that um, in a way, because his show pieces have been so spectacular, so dramatic, sometimes they've rather skewed the perception of his work um, mm -hmm. because they're only a part of it. And he is super popular with a lot of people who don't really like fashion mm -hmm. and they always focus on those show pieces. But what in a way I think is much more interesting in his work is the relationship between them and the actual wearable sellable mm -hmm. yeah. pieces in the That's same good. collection that have always had a relationship yeah. to it, but also be much more, I don't know if this answers your question, but much more about kind of haptics, about touch and feel, mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes about sort of qualities of particular fabrics. Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, I think they're much more tactile mm -hmm. than you would think but from, you yeah. know, images That's like this. Definitely yeah. that side of him, I think, mm. is, I mean, I, I, several years ago, um, looking at his work, and I, I saw, or, or kind of, uh, I 
identified a, a very definite link with somebody like Jean Muir used to yes. be. And that kind of mathematical tailoring, mm. yes. very rigorous, very precise. And yes. his, I mean, some of his suits and jackets are incredibly yeah. um, sophisticated. I've Demure. I've been wondering if he's a maths genius, mm. and Suzanne Lee, who was at college with him, told me that when they, in their pattern cutting classes, he always came up with these sort of ridiculously complex mathematical mm. formulae and did something totally, as it were, unnecessary, but she said it always came out, and yeah. his pattern cutting was brilliant. Yeah. Um, and I think often the kind of, you know, the structures of, say, those very hard, rigid pieces, yeah. you see those patterns echoed in things yeah. like the seaming and the pattern cutting. Mm -hmm. And of course it's totally different when it's fabric, because it falls and it flows. And, and he, does, he does tie the bigger kind of the more conceptual, for want of mm. a better word, issues into some of the more wearable pieces. So mm. even if it's something like when he did that print of those uh, sort of tower blocks with the fighting Ottomans in front yes. of them, but on the we very wearable pieces, the, and it looked like a Hawaiian thing. The great thing. thing about the wearable things, to use it, you know, it's a terrible, terrible word, word yeah. um, but the great thing about those pieces is the fact that he still approaches them with that kind with that of same. mind. Whereas a lot of people will just do another sweater mm. and they'll do it in whatever colour this season. Mm. It is about mm. the, the shape and the, and the mm. fit and the, you know, the actual structure of it. Mm. Is this the, the, this the, is the, the current? No, this is a previous thought, collection. Oh. This is spring, summer. So when are we going to see the, the current? It's to the show's just starting, so ah. in oh. a few minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. No, no, go. go. <laughs> I'm intrigued to see which way he's going to go today. Mm -hmm. Because last season, it was all about the tailoring and the cut, beautiful colour. I think it was called light on dark, mm -hmm. and these kind of colours that could light up the darkness. But then the season before that was Sip, where he was the Hitchcock waiter style, mm -hmm. serving yes. the champagne. Yes. And the models were sipping from these champagne glasses mm -hmm. as a kind of mirror into, that looking at themselves, a mirror into themselves. And that was, that did have this kind of showpiece, a little bit, mm -hmm. well, really quite conceptual. Um, so I don't know if we're going to get this real spectacle today, mm. um, but I'm excited to see. But, but interestingly, the, there were a, quite a lot of um, silhouettes and things that went through from one show to the other yeah. as well. Mm. Mm. I'm interested because we all kind of, or Caroline especially, you said that he kind of pieces, pieces like the table skirt, they over and the and the aeroplane dress and the paper dress, they kind of overshadow how amazing he is at making these kind of, I hate that word, but very wearable, very mm. beautiful mm. clothes. And I think there's an, I would say, without wanting to criticise him, there's an element where you wouldn't think of a label like Shalaya as something that's comfortable. A lot of women, yeah. I think if you said, what would you aspire to buy? Mm. They wouldn't say Shalaya. Mm. I, I, I always wonder why, because the clothes are beautiful. Maybe that's a question for sort of... I think, I think mm. pictures, the, the, the clothes that we like stand as a barrier between him and the general public, which is why I don't think he sells particularly well. Mm. Because people look at those and they think, well, who's going to wear that? How can they wear that? Where can they wear that? Mm. I mean, this was a, a moment of pure genius, mm. in my mm. opinion. But it meant nothing to the people who go down the street looking for clothes to wear for a party or whatever. But he does create those clothes as well. Why I know, but I think yeah. what I'm but saying is I he sort of distances distance himself, himself from the public with this sort of thing. Mm. And I'd like to see him separate them completely mm. in some way, mm. you know, and do art installations or whatever, yes. but then just do a, mm. a good, and it would be good, mm. a good, well thought out, intelligent collection. Mm. I mean, I think that, for example, you know, he's really interested in new technology, so things like a mm. laser dress or the, you know, mm. dresses with LEDs mm. and things like that. I think that interest in technology does actually morph mm. into mm. things like cut and construction and technique and, you know, when he does kind of bonded scenes or something like that. But maybe, you know, to answer your point, that's not really very sexy <laughs> and it takes a real kind of fashion nerd to I really be interested well, in I new tech. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of mutated into a garment maybe, like maybe, a coat. Maybe these ladies can help. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to me if you go into a shop to buy something, if you're a perfectly ordinary person who buys one fashion magazine a month or whatever mm. and just reads it on the train, you're not really terribly interested in the cut. You're interested in how that cut has made you look. So you don't think, oh, this is brilliantly cut. You just think, my bum looks big in this. So but, they do, but they do work when they're yeah. on. Yes, yes. What know, I'm saying is he's, he's speaking a different language. I, I think one of the big problems is, and, the, and it's funny that you were saying that the clothes that we like are these clothes, but then the clothes that, you know, yeah. the, the real mm. clothes, as it were, 
because what's happened, I think, over the years as well, is that we have fixated on those clothes, written yeah. about those clothes, <laughs> photographed those mm. clothes, yes. and the real clothes yes. aren't clothes that people want to put in magazines, as mm. we know from style yes, and, true. and yeah. things mm. like that. Yeah, that's which, true, actually. Which yes. is a shame, because mm. well, one, of, be one of the most interesting things was when he was having financial problems, he did that thing in Paris where he was just in the showroom. Mm. And I think it was that season specifically, and he did the most beautiful powder blues, um, mm. cheap skins, mm. Mm. Um, yeah. all these little mm. jackets that were kind of variant lengths and, and, uh, and still that play on a morphing piece, mm. Mm. but they worked as clothes, you know, they stood up as clothes. Well, those mm. denim, sorry, go on. But I don't think he got the press coverage because of that. Camilla, why do you think mm. he doesn't get, because you're, you're a writer, you're a journalist, mm. why do you think that But those show don't... pieces, those images there where, where he would do the articulated pieces or, or they'd come to life and they would mechanically mm. unfold or they have LED lights, when you have big advertisers, you're, you're in a magazine page, you're, you have the power to influence a newspaper or a magazine to go with your image and you can seduce people through advertising. Before, and I think this is something that Rosanna might know better, but before there was internet and digital, you had to seduce people with a very quirky idea to stand out because you had 12 shows a day. So if you had Naomi Campbell on the runway or you had a dress that articulated and unfolded into the new look in front of you. That was going to be the news image because it was, oh crikey, there's some extreme crazy yeah. bit of fashion we could put on cover. And then you would get the cover pages which would get the attention for fashion, but then actually people wouldn't realise that it distilled into into wearable and commercial pieces mm -hmm. because this might be a sort of nice show piece to see as you walked into the showroom, but then there'd be 50, 60 pieces that were the pieces that Browns or Barneys mm -hmm. came to sort of go through mm -hmm. or put into Corso Como and I think the fashion intellectuals or or sort of you know artsy people would see these as you know beautiful pieces of art, not fashion that you would necessarily well, well, interesting wear. Interesting, we were talking about the Britain Britain creates, creates yeah. yeah, and he does have a parallel life. I mean, yeah. To, yeah. To, to answer Colin's remark, you know, he does have this parallel life as an artist mm -hmm. and a you know an artist who sells. Who's because what did he do for Britain invented. Creates? Who did he collaborate with? Gavin Turk. Yeah, it was Gavin Turk. Um, Britain Creates was organised by the British Fashion Council to celebrate the Olympics this summer and it had nine collaborations between um, artists and designers, um, Jonathan Saunders, Jess Flood Paddock, uh, who else, Matt Collishaw and Matthew Williamson and then there was of course Hussein and Gavin yeah. and they collaborated on something called The Four Minute Mile. Um, Ian wrote the essay as the introduction to the book that accompanied the exhibition because the exhibition was at the V&A. Yeah. And um, it, was, it was a very interesting piece, kind of multi-layered. They had this conversation when they first met. Um, it's yeah, it's coming back to me. Yeah, is it coming? Yeah. And yeah. um, they had this conversation because Gavin's very interested in the concept of authorship. Um, and then the transcript from that conversation was made into a piece of music, which then had a music video to accompany it which was uh, based around an art piece that Gavin created of based around the Olympic rings and then the it had this kind of dialogue that went over this art it the final piece was a record yeah. and the book has the CD of the piece of music mm. accompanying it um, it was an interesting collaboration though and that that's typical of Chalayan he's very involved it's not just fashion it's music yeah. it's art but do you think he's in a way kind of stuck sounds kind of in a negative way but kind of in between these two places where on one hand he is creating these beautiful pieces that deserve to be sort of given as much recognition by buyers and by writers as, mm. as many other labels that create wearable pieces but then he's also creating these very artistic pieces that also sort of kind of pull him in two different directions because Tim Blanks once said he's one of fashion's most radically underappreciated artists mm. and I think there is always this kind of lingering sense with her saying that he's slightly getting overlooked but I think people change over the course mm. of a career and he's been sure. shown for nearly 20 years yeah. now and he I think himself has said that you know in his first 10 years or his first five if you asked him what was the most important he would have said the shows yeah. Yeah. Mm. and now he might say the clothes and I yeah. think perhaps that's evolving mm. it would be really interesting to see what well, he does. Well also because of his collaboration I mean he did say where he did the most beautiful clothes if you remember. Mm. Um, so it's yeah. kind of, yeah. um, I think he's yeah. involved. Yeah. I think yeah. maybe he doesn't have a problem with it, yeah. funnily enough. I think it's probably from 
this side of the yeah. catwalk, as mm. it were, that we're trying to again, box which happens people. with mm. we're just boxing, boxing people. Saying, yeah, well, yeah, that's an artistic easy. designer, mm. and this is a wearable yeah. person, yeah. and that's a you mm. know. I think that as a designer, I think he, like I said before, he he kind of approaches everything with that same mm. rigorous mathematical mind. Um, obviously, these shows as well, the, the the kind of mechanical shows, and, and especially the big um, kind of um, atmospheric shows were very much a part of that era yeah. where it was you know him and McQueen in London were the two mm. events yeah. of the season yeah. you know, which was a tremendous I mean when experience. he did his paper the yeah. paper suits right at the beginning mm. if you had a time capsule for each year you yeah. would have put one of those jackets yeah. in it. Yes. it it's it was almost if you had to capture style or what we were talking about that year you would have taken that as a piece from that mm. year like you would have maybe taken a McQueen bumpster it was like different pieces for mm. different years and mm. I think he approaches things as an artist he's not a fashion designer to be a fashion designer that's his creative well, output his tutors once tell him to go bug off and study sculpture when he's at St Martin's <laughs> but it, 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 I think he is that and especially that kind of St Martin's um, trail it's about he uses fabric as yeah. his mm. medium mm. Um, he, he, you know, He's a sculptor that with then fabric. Becomes yeah. Technology yeah. or involves other things. Mm, yeah. Ultimately, his choice is, is fabric. This ties into something we've talked about, Colin, but also something we talked about yesterday about this idea of Paris and how. He's always kind of followed his own career path, and as much as he has gone to Paris, he's stayed away from sort of going to one of those big houses and the way that a lot of that generation of very successful young British. But I think he dipped his toe in the water with sand and felt that wasn't for him, so decided to just yeah. stay on his own. And I don't think they probably felt, well, he isn't for us. No. Because he's very low key. Yeah. Um, they're not going to get much out of him as no. far as public well, it's, it's, it, it's very funny as well because it was very consistent at that time with Margiela and yeah. um, Hermes yeah. who was, yeah. you know, you would go yeah. there and see the same clothes but in mm. Linen for spring, summer and, the, yeah. and it wasn't mm. that thing where, okay, we've got a designer and they're going to give us show-stopping mm. headlines. Mm. Mm. This is interesting. This, this is the show. It's ah. just start with oh, all the looks in there. The opening yeah. look. Yeah. Balenciaga hat. But <laughs> <laughs> what do we think of the first look? We well, let's look across yeah, and see look, how, how many are like that. really interesting. And you can see this kind of showmanship in the background with the. We're getting, sorry, those are yeah, the is that a, what is that? It's no, a, a landscape. Photograph. I think it's a seascape. It's a seascape. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the show is called Seize the Day, um, and the venue is the BTC advertising agency, BTAP. And that's some kind of projection, isn't it, behind? Yes. yes. I don't know if it's seen. It might be. I don't this know whether it's seen. It's, 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 it's a moving image. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But. It's landscape, it can't move very much. No, I you think the camera just moves. Kind of I don't know whether it's the English side of the channel or the French. <laughs> <laughs> I'm liking this cloaked thing. Mm. It's very much this new modesty as well. And it's sort of a sportswear. Yeah. Oh, you can see Look. it's changing. That's nice. Mm, that's, that's beautiful. Nice. Elegant. Mm. Those hats are awesome. I love the green and white with that. Do they have a uh, plastic on the, or is that just very translucent? translucent? Oh. It looks like there's plastic on the Yeah, it looks like there's plastic going. Because there was, there was in the hat, the blue one was yeah. casting a blue light on the face. And under the frill of that skirt, I don't know if you can all see, that looks like mm. there's a very structured... Some sort of yeah, acetate or something. Yes, yes. that's, you no, know, if you think about they Balenciaga frills mm. yesterday, yeah. which were mm. bonded with well, the yeah. white underneath to give them that structure and to yeah. also mm. highlight that. Those yes. frills, I don't know. We've just seen them everywhere yeah. in London, yeah. J.W. Anderson with the frill top, but also... I mean, Hussein, again, this, this kind of skirt is such a signature of him. Yeah. I mean, I love mm. the, the fact that, you know, going right back to the mechanical one where, you know, they would explode yes. out of the back yeah. of the dress. Yeah. And he does such a... I mean, his movement yes. is because of the cut is incredible. Yeah. But he's very... He thinks a lot about the senses. You know, he's always yeah. thought about sound mm. and, and, and touch and feel. And I think mm. you see that. It's what we were saying about how he weds these more conceptual ideas into his wearable mm. pieces. Mm. Yes. You can see the, the interest in touch and feel and mm. movement in something like... And do like we know what the music is in the show? No, we don't know what the music is. Because that's so important. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we, we haven't been able to get yeah. the yeah. Yeah. which is a pity. It is a pity. Yeah. And he does describe his process of design as very instinctive. Mm. For the last collection, he said, I've been designing for so many years, it's now just all comes from an instinct. Mm. And so if you're seeing these kind of 
beautiful cuts that keep mm. occurring. Mm. I think mm. I think probably the best designers do mm. as well. Mm. Well, know. we were talking about this kind mm. of before it started about how he has been designing for so long that you, it's kind of refreshing to see him mm. reference himself for yeah. want of better mm. and yeah. sort of use his own signatures as well as sort of exploring these new. I think this is a zip as well. I think as well that is, I mean, weirdly, after the, the, the thing we did yesterday, I went over to the Tate Modern um, to see the Edvard Munch show. And it, in, within that, it's about him returning to certain images mm. and repeating them over and over again. Yeah, that's great. It's so and great. I think in a way, that does differentiate as well between somebody who has that artistic bend mm. and the confidence mm. to do that and mm. somebody who is just a designer who says, I've got to do something new this yeah. season, I've got to make another new thing to sell, yeah. I've got to do, is part of that thing. And I think mm. you're saying it's very much fixed in that yeah. idea of it, it being an artistic thing and, and having the confidence. This idea of a, a process as well, as, I was actually mm. saying this as well before the stream started, he gave a talk at um, Central St. Martin's to celebrate when the new building yeah. opened and someone asked him, how do you start working on a new collection? He said, well, I always start with the, the couple before that, or maybe the two or three before that. Because he's like, I think of it as like a big pot of curry, and you add more and more ingredients, and it gets more and more tasty and more and more spicy. And I think that does, it's this idea of a process and developing and doing it perfectly, and there can be changes within that, but the, the core thing you're working on stays. It's about refinement, I yeah. think. Mm. Yeah. And that may change because of what's going on around mm. you and the, the stimuli and what's in the air and all those kind of things that are happening. But ultimately, it's still your core. Um, this and that takes a strong designer. Yeah, because this ties a lot to what you, you've mentioned in the past, Colin, about how that does take a strong designer to have that confidence to do that. And this is a criticism you've made of London. Well, people yeah, I, I think that a designer has a sort of continuum. And it, it, a person isn't a designer who changes every, mm. every season. And I do criticise London with this. I think that young designers who are desperate to make money and keep going mm. listen to people who don't know what they're talking about. And they, they say, what are you going to do new, new next time? I told you the, the other week to camera here mm. what Balenciaga said when he was asked mm. if he had any new ideas. And Balenciaga is very interesting in what Ian just said. He always locked himself into his study and started working on his next collection as the current collection mm. was being shown. Mm. Mm. He never watched it. Mm. And of course there wasn't all this. You know, yeah. mm. it, you know. yes. I do think that this is, I think this is absolutely lovely mm. and mm. I think it's fabulous that he's not doing anything exciting. Yeah. What he's doing is things which are consummate mm. and that's what we need mm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. Not one of these things makes you oh, you know. No, but I think the collections that been it's so beautiful. The Don't ones, you agree? yes, the ones that are successful very this season. Fluid, very feminine. So I yeah. think so I think the ones that are the collections that are standing out as successful this season are the ones that have integrity that yeah. are, are sort Absolutely. of able to follow through their codes, and I think it takes. You know, it takes confidence to be that refined, yeah. to have poise and integrity, which is what the woman wants and needs right now, but also what a strong designer needs. You don't need to be running into a, into a burning building and go, well, what am I going to do? What am I going to save? You need to know the right thing to save. Mm -hmm. And it's those are the collections that stand out. The collections that I've seen this time that I think are really strong are where they haven't got distracted by pots of gold flashing at them or, or mm -hmm. LED lights. They've just stayed with... You know, because some people are able to embrace the internet, the the sort of like the huge exposure the, where everybody, thousands of people see your shows before you even, you know, had a cup of tea after yeah. it. Whereas before yeah. you used to have time to digest it and reflect. Yeah. The other nice thing about these clothes is they won't look as good on 18 year olds as they will on 25 or 30 year olds. And that is a big step forward yeah. in fashion, yeah. I think. Mm. You know, they're feminine, yeah. they're young, they're adult. But I think that mm. ties into what we were saying about this, this new modesty. It's much more taking clothes away from a certain body or a certain girl or a certain type of woman. And it's a lot more about sort of putting your own stamp on things. Before we go up, because I'm really interested mm. in what you just said, I want to pick up on it, but you said it's that confidence of not having to do something that's very like legitimate and very authentic and, mm. and very clear in what you're doing. And it ties um, into this idea that I had about how 
Hussein's always managed to stop his collections from ever appearing gimmicky, even though he does yeah. do a lot of showmanship. Like you mentioned, the champ him serving champagne yeah. to his models. Yeah, and but he'd never be well. on Ab Fab. He'd never yeah. be sort of with. But he did something like doing the champagne or doing yeah. the the um, the tangent flows when he buried his clothes and yeah. that kind of thing. It's never looked gimmicky or showy mm. in a way that other designers who've yeah. tried that similar mm. kind of big well, thing. Why is that? I think he's a very earnest man. I think he mm. really cares. He's not doing it just for the sake mm. of shocking you or yeah. getting a headline or getting a tweet. He's doing it because he genuinely puts his yeah. soul I into mean, that. It, again, it's that word commitment yeah. because I think he is committed to it, whether he's on stage with a bass guitar mm -hmm. you know, in a show or whether he is dressed up as the waiter, yeah. or whether he's mm. he's right a consistent part. I think yeah. it's about designing too because I think that he, it's a little what I was trying to say before, that he takes some of those ideas from the very sculptural showpieces, mm. but mm. the reason they're not gimmicky is I think when they're translated it's as if they're like a code that's kind of morphed into the garment itself mm. so there's a translation that goes on rather than some sort of literal mm. copying mm. I think what's interesting is he's very much about innovation but he's not necessarily about newness mm. you know he's, he's novelty. never mm. yeah. exactly he doesn't go for novelty mm. yeah yes yeah. yeah. let's continue oh. Oh. I thought that was the first look why is it yeah, yeah, we've gone back. Yeah, we've gone back. back. No, 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 we can zoom through. Let's zoom through. Why does it say 18? I think it's recapping. So we click off and go back on. Oh. Okay. We'll refresh. <laughs> Gosh, I wish I had a button like that. <laughs> refresh, <laughs> yes. Every morning when you woke up. <laughs> All day. Back to the opening. Indeed. Room. Oh. Well. Yeah, that's the opening. I like that. Yes, lovely, yeah. yes beautiful mm. show. Nice palette. And again, yes, this kind lovely, of lovely palette. Lovely. boxy mm. Mm. Yeah. This, You know, again, we were talking yesterday about the sort of square, almost cubist. I hate this eye searing yeah. green, though, I have to say. I think we've had enough of that. But it's slightly hidden, at least. Yeah. Oh, no, there was well, one no, on the no, bright peplum. The peplum, yeah. The peplum, yeah. And there's some and you can the, the screen is what is onto the clothes. Yeah, it's onto the model, yeah, it's onto the model and the backdrop. Yeah. Because now the Ooh. screen is leaves or mm. something. Is that a print? Yeah, it's on not you. It's yeah. a it's a no, 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 I think it is a reflection. Is that that's a print? Do you think it is a print? Yeah, it is. Yeah, no. I love the way that that's tailored to her body. Yes, it's beautiful. But I love these illusion dresses. Really lovely. And I think again, it's this. It's sexiness, but without being overt, you know, yeah. like those Stella McCartney illusion dresses that just everyone has mm. worn. Yes, but the Gareth Pugh had something of that quality. Very you almost seem mm. to see a leg emerging from yes. a fabric, as if mm. it was a car yeah. carving or yeah. something. Yeah. 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 Mm. Do we think there's any significance in the fact that it's a fig behind? Is it something to do with? Yes. Yes. with <laughs> what do you think the significance? I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm just Heritage. wondering why it is. Adam and Eve. Well, that is lovely. Cyprus? I wish, this is where I'd love <laughs> to see. Yes. This yes. is where it's so yes. annoying that we can't yeah. see them moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's going I'd to love to see what's happening at the back yeah. and the yeah. side. And and I'd like I to think see Cyprus, you were right. Yeah. I think no, it wasn't me, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I think some of these things as well, what we've been talking about today, bring us to talk about the, the actual presentation yeah, of doing yeah, something yeah. like this. Yeah. Because for me, he is one of those people that this is where it, it makes things very difficult. And, yeah, I, yeah. and I was kind of torn being involved in this from the beginning mm. um, because, A, because of the sort of instant commentary, yeah. which I think is, is kind of quite difficult. And the we fact that to do like you know, you kind of, yeah, you, you kind of yeah. get into that. And I know we talked yesterday yeah. even about when I was on a newspaper and doing news reporting, I hated it, you know, mm. because I liked the fact that you could when you could go to the shows over a week and at the end mm. of it think and ruminate, don't, think don't, through. Don't, don't. We live yeah. in an interesting world. No, 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 I'm not <laughs> saying that. I think, no, I think <laughs> because time. I think the technology is fantastic and the, you know, seeing the images mm. and things, I just think that the fact that it, it's the 24-7 the culture, yeah. Yeah. but it's in danger, I think, now with this fashion side of things mm. becoming like the news channels are. Mm. where they're filled with stuff which is not about news. Mm. It's about supposition, it's about yeah. it's like I was saying, is that a print or is that a print? Mm. I mean, yesterday even with the leather yeah. that turns out to be silk goopier. Yeah. You know, it's like and the tr the problem is is that those are the kind of things that then get mm. retweeted on or yeah. reblogged or whatever. And I think that there is there's something to do with it. And I think mm. you were talking yesterday about how the discussion, the mm. fact that we talk mm. about these things and the things we're talking about other than mm. just the clothes. Mm. 
is actually mm. really interesting. Do you find that, because that's yeah, actually I'm really sure interesting saying, yeah. with Rosanna's yeah. work, do you find that in some ways digital presence does affect the way that fashion is viewed and maybe take away some of the accuracy with which certain pieces of fashion should be viewed? Because you do get yeah. people tweeting stuff that's incorrect and then that gets retweeted and oh, it, it changes the way mm. that you view yeah. fashion because there is it's this immediacy. It's completely changed the industry. Yeah. I've been at the BFC uh, working in digital for five years now and I've witnessed this complete revolution. Mm. And London Fashion Week used to be trade and this insider, real experts commenting on the shows mm. and I remember as a teenager I would log on to Vogue.com but you would have this expert view within a few hours of each show that was already more sped up but now it is absolutely instant and yes there is that risk that of course somebody can missee something or misconstrue something, mm. tweet it, it's quite something to pick up on a little nugget and that's what, mm. that's what actually spreads. We were saying just now that um, it's useful that we also see the tweets alongside the show yeah. slides because we get to find out these little mm nuggets that perhaps we might just not see from the presentation mm. whether they're correct or not yeah. no we can but hope but it's interesting because you think that that's how everyone views fashion who isn't within the industry and it's it's this weird sort of because this is why i'm so undecided about what i think because yeah. on one hand you're very much like it has to be accurate and you have to be able to see the clothes move but then you think oh, no, other than those 200 people in the room i mean yesterday we were talking about how you know, fashion is multi-level, mm. and, and someone like Hussein, I think, is a prime example of that. And the fact that there is this totally kind of, you know, boffin professor mm. creator yeah. who's making things which are completely about his artistic statement, and at the same time making something which is a white shirt, which is just beautifully mm. cut and will be great, and women will go, oh, "I want that white shirt." Fashion does work on all those levels. Mm. I'm just, I'm just having a moment, I suppose, yeah. where I'm, I'm questioning how this can be used best, best. to, you know, take it forward, or what you but take also forward. At I the think moment, there's always those, those Yeah, at the moment it's still a bit sort of new. I mean, at yeah, the moment it's like we're seeing a postcard of the Mona Lisa, and we're not yeah. experiencing the Mona Lisa yeah. hanging on the wall of the Louvre, and mm. you don't see you can't see how that moves, you can't see whether those girls are walking fast or slow, whether the hang of the painted silk line follows mm. the body or it's just an accidental part of the shadow. Mm. And I think at the moment you do, it's, it, we're only seeing very two-dimensional images and that's, that's interesting. And you know, maybe biddies or gifts will do it so that these things or can spin. Obviously that's very dear to us here. Yeah. 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 Well, I think you have to experience the actual relationship with the cloth and the yes. fabric mm. you know like when you go to a gallery you have a different experience with an oil when painting you, to a postcard yeah, yeah. and i think or even yeah. when you read a book and there's yeah. something about holding that book but for joe public fashion is part of the entertainment business mm. Mm. they don't really care what the clothes are they just want to feel whether it looks glamorous whether she looks sexy could you see your sister in that or whatever you know i think we do far too much heavy breathing mm. it's not art Sometimes you can get very near it, but the ones that are get very near it are the ones that touch the public least. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really, the, the whole idea of fashion as art has come in on the back of all these extraordinary minority interest magazines why, where why the photograph is always more important than the dress, and the dress is usually, despite that, paradoxically, is chosen for its extreme quality. And that's why, of course, they, they, yeah. um, they, they get such few readers, readers compared with, say, Grazia or, or Sunday Times Style or whatever, mm. you know? Um, and I think we've got to keep it in proportion. Why isn't fashion art? Ian, it's well, like your it? essay, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but you'd why say architecture is well, art. Well, in basic <laughs> terms, art is absolutely useless. Art has no purpose <coughs> at all. Clothes do have a purpose. But, but what I, there's always interesting. Clothes I always think about no one would ever... Ask this lady, she opinion. knows about <laughs> it. <laughs> I don't know about it, but I, I mean, I really strongly agree with Colin. I don't think fashion is art, and I never find that debate very interesting, yeah. because if it was art, it would be called art. There's a reason why there's exactly. a different word for it. Exactly. Um, I think what happens is that art and fashion often flirt with each other and mm. have done a lot in the mm. last few decades. Yeah, so they, they mimic each other. They start to try yeah. and look like each other, but because yeah. two things look the same doesn't mean that they are and I think what's really important to look at 
is the underlying institutional and commercial structures mm. that make the space for those things to exist. It's not that art isn't commercial, because of course mm. it is, mm. but it's very much predicated largely on one-offs or limited mm. edition mm. prints. Fashion is actually an industry. It's about making multiples. Exactly. There's mm. no such thing as an original, except maybe in couture, yeah. not which even largely is a loss yeah. leader. And anyway, yeah. as you say, they're not originals, because they're often made, you know, four yeah. or five. Mm. Um, so I think, actually, if you look at the kind of uh, sort of institutional structures underneath the look of it all, there are far more differences than there are similarities. Yeah. Yeah. So I that would be I'm, my... I think, I think that's a marvellous answer. Can I say Thank that? Oh. I think that's a really <laughs> good <laughs> answer. So this is a big love in <laughs> here. Well, for this moment, you might say everything in a minute trash violently disagree with I, I think, like you say as well, it's the fact that, weirdly, the, 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 the blurring has mm -hmm. come because they've actually used each other. Yes. You know, the art yeah, world has blurred. probably become closer to the fashion Absolutely. world. I think, the rot, yeah, I think the rot the began years. with um, Dior and Balenciaga. Mm -hmm. Balenciaga looked mm -hmm. at Velasquez and all of this. Dior looked to the turn of the century yeah. and they made it costume. Mm. And Couture, mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. poor John, I mean, I loved what John did, but it was always costume. It wasn't mm -hmm. anything that people could wear. You know, and I just think that really, if it wants to be taken seriously, there is no place for this in fashion. I actually think also fashion is interesting enough. It doesn't Without need the status exactly. of art to make it interesting. I agree. And it would, you know, you don't find people going around very often saying, oh, art is turning into fashion. It's always people exactly. saying fashion is turning into yes. art. Why, why and that's because I think they think it's somehow less serious. But why, why do people feel that there's always this kind of Darkness. ingrained like, frivolity that's associated yeah. with fashion that people seem yeah. so self-conscious exactly of? The fashion world is controlled by, dominated by, and full of people who have no education. That is the simple answer. Could we see a small picture? <laughs> Excellent, Colin. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'll go back to that yellow. Um. And actually what this you were saying yeah. about um, art, to lie on the same SIP collection, mm. two collections ago, he uh, wanted to portray this idea of the, the models were meant to be at an art gallery almost, sipping yeah. champagne, staring at this, uh, it was a a screen in the background and they were meant to be looking at it in a very vacuous way just sipping their champagne and actually what they were looking at was this mirror into themselves so he's preoccupied well, by it too idea. yeah that's fun. That's he fun. he doesn't like the idea of people just going to gallery openings and not really looking at the paintings mm. and it's oh, I think that's lovely because that's all about narcissism and Things mm. yeah. which is obviously very important in fashion. Exactly. But that's what's so refreshing about Hussein, I think, is he always explores these areas that are sort of very much aside mm. from fashion. But it's what we were saying before, that it doesn't feel contrived. Mm. It feels like this is something mm. genuinely researched. Yeah, because yeah. we can't see this, but this looks to me as if it's veering dangerously towards the pinny that a lady in a school canteen might but wear. She wouldn't have mm. this no, saucy little wouldn't. sheer bit. Yeah. Yeah. And well. that, that yellow panel that echoes the body shape mm. with this very It'd be interesting square. Interesting. It's so interested in form and it's, figure. It's like making drawings about the body, isn't it, mm. on dresses? And it does look well. like there's more fabric behind. Yeah. Yes, yes. there seems to be a lot of things kind of at the back, back of a lot And that long yeah. one has yeah. some interesting yeah. hem thing yeah. going mm. on. That yeah. Mm. Oh, now oh, that's an interesting. That's very cocoon. That's very cocoon. And you can see there's a fold of fabric at the back. Mm. We'll have a look at yeah. some of the close-ups, mm. won't we? So the air text? These remind things? me, you know the hat? It's awful that I can't remember the name of the collection. When it went down and became the dress and then went back up. Yes, I know. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. It is a remember that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know when it was, ages ago. Yeah, yeah. It was one of really that work, really technologically sort of sophisticated. Yeah, when she was yes. completely so naked took up the all of his energy, really. Yes. But th that hat really echoes. Mm. Mm. Yes. Oh, so yeah, the Transformer. Yeah. Yes, that's it. SS97. I'm glad that no one else could remember. <laughs> it was well SS97. Oh, well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Revision to <laughs> our class. Yeah, it's like a class. beekeeper's hat to me. <laughs> What's that thing? That's it is, is it being like like these is it is printed on it yes. or is it projected over it? What are you talking about? On the top of the hat. Oh, this is a print. I this think it's a projection, but it's yeah. no, I don't think it's a print. Do you think it's a print? I think it's I think it might be a print because it doesn't. No, but a few years ago it was on her skin. Yeah. That's a very beautiful dress, I think. Yes. And I think it's her text or was. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot yes, of air text there. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a lot of sportswear. Air text is very big at the moment. Yes. Mm. 
And Colin, this is coming back when you were saying that you're not such a fan of digital prints at the moment, and that you'd like <laughs> to see them all. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> you'd like to see them all stripped back to. Didn't you oh. mention kind of a tool so you could really just yes. see the cut of the clothes? And look at this, yeah. all white. You can it's focus on the cut. Yeah. It's lovely. Mm -hmm. It definitely is a moment of fashion. I think. I mean, it comes. I, I think it does come back to everything we're talking about. Mm. The whole kind of the fact that there's so much of it now. The fact that it's all out there now. Yeah. It's just like. Da -da 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 -da. It's almost like, I mean, it's funny, one of the, the things that Mandy, when Mandy Leonard was on the panel, mm. one of the things I noticed was that you were talking about the whole Twitter and Instagrams and the whole atmosphere and, da -da -da, and she was going, you know, I love it, I love it and I just want more of it and I want more of it and I want more of it. Mm. And I thought, my God, it's like fast food. <laughs> yeah. It's this mm. thing that you eat and you keep yeah. eating up. Yes. It doesn't, yeah. it, 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 is it going to sustain satisfy. you and yeah. satisfy you but you want yeah. more and more and more of it. And yeah, I think what is happening with these collections, right, especially right. at the moment, mm. is there has been a stripping back, yes. whether it's from mm. colour, whether it's shape. Mm. And also it is about something mm. which is, we touched on yesterday, mm. slightly more yeah. difficult, yeah. slightly more... Yeah. You know, it's not about a sexy, sexy, pull it mm. in, shove it all out there that mm. everybody wants mm. and immediately gets. Mm. There is that kind of a bit more knowing It's a sort things. of less is more strategy, yeah. isn't it? And a yeah. sense of in commitment, way, I yeah. think, like mm. a commitment from the wearer and a commitment from mm. the designer. And, and when we say the more the difficult quotes, it's this idea that you really want something and then you have it. and. Mm. It does flatter you, but not in a in an obvious way. And there's this more of a sense of thinking about the clothing, and it, it really ties into this idea we talked about yesterday, which is even though it's a recession, it's those higher end like demi yeah. I hate that word, but demi couture pieces that people are really buying. It's about something you really love. I you think. really love. What are we saying about this guy today? Are we saying he's a major figure in fashion? I think he is a major figure in terms. Of it's I think what Camilla said was bang on, which is this idea of the certain moments in time where you take a Hussein piece mm -hmm. and it would symbolise mm -hmm. that year or that two years. More so than other people. I think he's a major no, independent. Very mm. Yes, is. he's very That's what he is. Mm. He goes his own path, which yeah. is admirable. Actually, it's a good question. We should ask yeah. this, not necessarily now. How many designers actually count? Camilla, you've, you've written books on various... Yeah. You've worked with various different yeah. big figures. How do you think he'll be remembered? Or what do you think his role is? How do you think he counts? I think... Well, he is very independent, and he... He has his sort of like standout ideas or, you know, his, I think he, he, he does show pieces, but he's also very reserved and very private about how, you know, I think he's quite a private designer. He's, he's sort well, of like, person, you know, sure. he's not sort of like trying yes. to just splash it all out mm. there. He's very considered. And what I was actually thinking is, I think in a way these cl clothes really do su suit where we are at the moment because I think the more you, you more exposed you become with internet, with twitting, with mobiles, with this, you used to just quietly go to the show with your notebook, mm. write some mm. notes, go away, come home. Now you, people can access you from every direction yeah. mm. and I think mm. in a way, the, the way we're dressing now, we want to be less exposed, we want to could not guard ourselves, it's, it's quite mm. empowering to, to not have it all hanging out because you're sort of you're, you're stripping yourself back because you've got your phone, you're this, you're that. You, you've got all these sort of like things that expose you're how you're feeling, anyway. what you had for breakfast, what train you're on, what this, what that. But actually you're, 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 mm. you're, you're pulling back so that you have to really know you to understand mm. you. And I think these clothes are clothes where you have to know you to understand mm. you. And I think there's quite a nice intelligence to that. Mm. Mm. As well, to, you know, Colin proposing that question which is quite a profound big big, big question mm. but actually in terms of what designers count lots of different designers count for, for different, different things reasons, and yes. for different amounts of time mm. you know looking back it's always you know you look back through fashion history and there are certain names that come up and they're respected mm. and they've changed the this and they've changed that but actually for most people, as, we, as, as Colin was mentioning before, there are designers that might have only lasted for one season or three seasons mm. who were the moment in fashion well, yeah. you had body to have map, things. For example. Yeah. Body map, for the tough in the 60s. You know, all of these people that then become yes. forgotten, but actually are so important mm. in fashions, in, in fashion at that moment mm. in time. And yeah. I think that, there again, we have this, and maybe that's the... The, the trying to make one, you know, intellectual or artistic about it, that there's this, this sort of profundity of, 
oh, this designer is going to be really remembered and important, mm. whatever. But actually, I think that those designers who are doing something mm. that everybody wants at one moment in time yeah. are as key mm. as the people who mm. are mm. changing fashion yeah. history. Yeah. Mm. See, the problem is, in the past, we had peaks. Although a friend of mine who's an art historian says, very cynically, but all my friends are cynical, as you would imagine, <laughs> actually, she says very cynically, the ones who, who, um, who continue are the ones who can afford to advertise hugely. And she says, as we all know, Chanel was not a great designer, she was a great merchandiser. Mm. And she advertised more than anybody else in the 20s, with Batu coming behind, a little behind. And I think there's a lot of truth in that, mm. you know. Um, Dior was the first designer to have a publicity yeah. agent, mm. and it spread across the world like wildfire. There's a great essay you know? about that on Show Studio oh, by really? Timothy Law. Oh really? Read it. <laughs> well, when I can, get, <laughs> when I can find out, get onto this thing, I'll yeah. be very happy. I'll send it to you. And Alexandra Palmer has written, uh, there's a V&A book on Dior that's very good on all oh, the licensing deals yes. um, yes. in the 50s, yes. which were and Jacques Fant, he was yes. another one who did it. This, mm. this idea of sort of moments in time, and I'm interested in what you said, Ian, about kind of these designers who just, they symbolise the times, and they're just sort of bang on it. And I think what's interesting with Hussein is, that idea of being relevant to the time is all wrapped up in, in his work, which mm. is quite, again, mm. I hate this word, I keep using words, I hate this kind of postmodernist idea of kind of criticising what's going on at the time that you're designing. And I think he's very aware of that, and he's very aware of his role. He's not trying to be a, a symbol of the time, he's always trying to play with what, what already are the symbols of the times. And I think there are very few designers who <coughs> do that as well as he does. And maybe he won't be remembered as... <coughs> <coughs> something that everyone so wanted. Sorry. You're right. Yeah, something that everyone wanted to buy, or something that was even sort of yeah, the most, the most luxurious, or the most even the most exciting thing from that time. But that ability to play with. with I that think he's, in, he's it, it's funny but again t talking about the fact that the, some of those shows are kind of like were so memorable mm. and mm. the pieces mm. and the standards that. But I actually think he's an incredibly subtle mm. designer yeah, no. in that. It's very sensitive, yes. which is why he does pick I up agree. on all of those things as I well. And they, the, you know, they, they are taken mm. through and extrapolated mm. in a sleeve or mm. something like that, which I know, uh, you know without sounding pretentious, that, that I think he does do. Brilliantly. But also, I don't think it's particularly new that it's the show pieces that go into the history books, because yeah, look sure. at a designer like Schiaparelli. It's, yeah, it's all exactly. surrealist, this mm. and that, and shoes on heads exactly. and, and everything. Yeah. But actually, you know, most of her, for most of her clients, she made absolutely beautifully cut black suits. Mm. Mm. Those ones aren't in the history books, and they may but even not be in the costume collections in museums across well, the world. Well, of course, because most of the things were worn and, and, and worn out. Exactly. So the things that get put into yeah. a lot of the so, museums I mean, are I think even yeah. Mm. Yeah, but it's a little more than that, isn't it? It's the, we all want the drama of excitement mm. and the yes. big, the big well, press and everything. And I mean, that dreadful exhibition at the V&A you know, was awful, absolutely awful, because they they came at it not from an aesthetic point of view at all. Mm. They wanted certain names, they wanted certain looks, you know. I mean, I mustn't talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, that's, maybe that's why Hussein will do so well, because his show pieces are so good. And that's why we remember maybe, being so much. But maybe we're all guilty because, you know, we we put we want the dramatic pictures for our books. Mm, sure. We mm, don't sure. want the beautiful little black suits. You're right. You're it, right. You know. It's you're a, right. it's a, it is difficult. Uh, and, and it's mm. funny as as Camilla touched on talking about the reporting and the pictures and mm. the mechanical dress and the Naomi. Mm. I mean it is very difficult, even if you do believe it, in yes. clothes. You know, yes. I champion D Muir. Yes. for many years and, and, and was you know, lucky to be able to, to, to work mm. with her and present mm. her in things, but it was very difficult to get that past a features editor yeah. yes. or a news exactly. editor, yeah, they were because it wasn't, pictures. whereas, yeah, they exactly. and, I, and I can remember, yeah, I can remember moments of you know, being mm. at the shows in Paris mm. and writing about mm. that whole changeover mm. with all the Belgians coming to Paris mm. and this amazing thing, and, mm. and the, the picture editor on the newspaper was a girl's on roller skates from a you yeah. know show that nobody went to yeah. because it was yeah. fun. But you yeah. see that even in oh the newspaper coverage today. Oh no, it's more than that. It's much today. more. It's much more dangerous than that, really. It's saying fashion's balmy. Mm. Only mm. nutters are interested yes. in high fashion. <laughs> 
Sometimes when I'm sitting in shows, I tend to agree <laughs> with this, I have to say. But yeah, um, but sometimes fashion's in danger of playing up to its own oh, bag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You look, yes. and you look yes. across yes. the front row and it's like central casting. But also because you can, that's how, that's how <laughs> you immediately... Yeah. True. look at the yeah. way they dress. That's oh. how you immediately so. get noticed yeah. and yeah. get yeah. headlines. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, there was once a hilarious piece in the Evening Standard, because I once looked at all the press cuttings for Hussein because they had them at St. Martin's, and I was surprised to find that the press has been unbelievably kind to him. I, mm. I had imagined they somehow would have been meaner. Mm. But actually he's had, this was some years ago, he'd had very, very good press. There was only one cruel article and it was the Evening Standard that sent someone out on a Friday night to Paul in central London wearing one of those sort of carved wooden pod heads. No, that was style. The peanut was that style? Head. It was you! Well done! No, it was <laughs> me. No, it was Jeremy Lang. It was Colin in the peanut. No, no, no. It was, <laughs> yeah, tell you, it was Jeremy Lang. His sister was an actress and she was out of work. So he said, I'll give you 100 quid if you go. He did it three but times. But that was the only say. better sort of rather mean <laughs> press yeah. I've yeah. ever seen. He did it three times yeah. with different yeah. say. That's it, with a sort of very, yes. one as well. But also going back to what you are saying before, I think it's quite interesting how powerful the press is, how powerful mm. buyers are, and there is an argument that fashion design isn't just made by designers, no, yeah. no, because definitely. actually it's also made by, you know, the buyers in Selfridges, mm. or by style, or, oh, you know, yeah. 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 Um, it's, 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 it's a whole yeah. sort of industry that yes. kind of works together in a kind of yes. unplanned, unprogrammed and, way, yeah. is it? And right? also that can come from any area, I yeah. mean, I can remember, it must be in the 90s, whole thing with like suddenly on TV there were young TV presenters girls who were wearing yeah. these clothes and suddenly there were you know trends coming out of nowhere yeah. Yeah. because they were wearing pedal yeah, pushers exactly. or yeah. they were wearing yeah. Yeah. and it was kind of yeah. suddenly that had nothing to do mm. with the fashion industry mm. and all the retailers were completely like well, thrown yeah, by yeah, because they yeah. it wasn't on the structure you know, of yeah. the six months well, we're talking about yeah. fashion of this sort of level mm. Trends are absolutely irrelevant. Yeah, mm -hmm. completely. You know, it's like saying, "Oh, what is Picasso's trend yeah. for this mm. for this year?" But well, he doesn't have one. He just develops yeah. one. Is in his head and his heart. Yeah. I'm going to have to go. Oh, yeah. Should we finish? Should we <laughs> so let's just see this right into the end. Yeah. Yes, yes. 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 No, that's really quietly. Really I love this shape. He's yeah. doing exam for a sort of. Well, it's like he's referring to one of his most theatrical moments, but in a very sort of beautiful yeah. It's an echo, isn't yeah. it? Very yeah. much so. Yes. I think it's also interesting to see this season that it's not just the press and buyers in a very minimal way, but the public via social mm. media are now able to influence the designs mm. on the catwalk. In New York, there were designers who uh, they hosted competitions in the run-up to their show, and the public could choose designs to go on the catwalk. Mm. Um, and also, really, the most tweeted about shows during London Fashion Week were yeah. things like Burberry with Harry Styles. At yeah. I think when we talk about Hussein being tweeted about and mm. getting the wrong mm. thing, it's you wouldn't really have your Joe blogs necessarily tweeting, tweeting about yeah. Chilean. Mm. Um, the ones that go truly viral are for different reasons. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so we've just and now have some print. That print. print. Frill mm. again. It's hmm. quite a big collection. Now that though. looks mm. like he's that's going into showpiece because it hasn't she got yeah. is this a reflection or has she got silver makeup on now? I no, know. Is, is that, that, her is that the Palladium wig? I don't know if that's the Palladium oh, wig. Pala that? Yeah, that's the Palladium that right. wig. Yeah, that is. Because yes. he did a Palladium necklace on a cocktail dress yeah. in the last season. And it's very classical, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, self-consciously. It's a marble print. It's a marble yes. print. Yeah. It's a marble print, print, print and she looks like a column and she's got a yeah. 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 negative of the Palladium Would make a marvellous bathrobe. It's a little bit... What's her name? That third is... Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did, yeah. 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 did all the goddess series? I've gone totally blank, but anyway. It's very goddess. I think we've got a close up of the of the hat. The, of the hat, we can have a a look at. Maybe it's on a couple of photos. You can there see it, it here. So these are coming in from backstage. Yeah. Just be. Mm. And they're here. There he is. Yes. Should we Put it on a bit of weight. <laughs> Should we give him a round of applause? Fashion. <laughs> <Certainly>. <laughs> so 
what, what are our gut reactions to it? Oh, I liked it. I liked, I liked it. it. Yeah, very much. Very it's sophisticated. Mm. Yeah. Now that's printed at the end. Yeah, I would have skipped the print section. Definitely. You should have finished before that. I liked the marbling, yeah. but not the coloured prints. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, the marbling. Rosanna, you said you were interested to see whether he did something that was very wearable mm. and very... Mm. Exactly. Very and actually, you know you were asking at the beginning if Camilla and I had these lust-worthy pieces for mm. July in this season. Certainly, the ones towards the end, beautiful cut, real, mm. I think, statement dresses, I can imagine for a lot of women that would really capture mm. catch their eye mm. if they mm. if they walked into um, mm. brands or wherever. Oh yes, it's very it's very wearable. Mm. Yeah, so. very. And I but also it, it has a bit of a magma mag yeah. magma effect. But it's, it's still well. got there's something wondrous to it, which yeah. refers yeah. to his mm. incredible table skirts and mm. aeroplane dresses. And I don't think he ever loses that, even when he does something as. Simple. And no, could we it. have a look on, on the tweets coming mm -hmm. through? Because I wonder if, just because yes. we're only oh, seeing the looks, if there was a spectacle. Uh, there was a lot so of very hard coding. We there did was a lot of, such sort of hard coding. hurrah around the, the Palladium wig. Mm. Oh, was yeah, it? Yeah, real focus on that. And, and, and did they, they, it looks yeah. like they came out quite closely together in twos. You see, yeah, that's exactly. something we didn't mm -hmm. see. Yes, because normally he'll have a three models coming oh, up and then lining oh, up, won't he? But well, also yeah. all that kind of... That's the, always really you know, important to selling the, the, the story. The choreography mm. yeah. of yeah. things really is it tells the story. Yeah. 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 Yes, and these that. ones, they're all... You can see them. Yeah. They're doing emotion, the walk through, can't yeah. you? You see you emotion, really but it looks emotion. 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 And I wish you'd see more pictures from the side of the Yes, exactly. The way that flies away, it's beautiful. Oh, and I think somebody's saying something about the projection there. Oh, well, no, no. Yeah. He's How just can you even see that? that? <laughs> well, should we all wrap I things think up we and go have a closer look, look in our own <laughs> time? <laughs> okay, let's leave. Should we end it with a, mm. another round of applause for our wonderful collection and for our wonderful panel? Well, that's we really can't really clap ourselves. Fine, we won't clap. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Wonderful panel. <laughs>